Hello, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Monday, the 5th of March, 2007, and we had another ugly session on Wall Street today. The S&P 500 closed with a loss of about 0.9%. Uh, these spiders lost $1.22 today, and it's just tough to uh, make money on the long side in here unless you're just uh, making quick day trades. And as I said over the weekend, that I think right now for most people the best position to be in is sidelines, is to be in cash. That is a position because right now, I mean, to sell short after it's dropped as severely as it has here, you know, nearly 10 points in the S&P 500, to be sell uh, in, the, in the spiders, that is, um, to be selling short down here, it just seems like the risk reward isn't that strong. Um, but at the same time, it's definitely way too early to be a buyer because there's no bounce in here. It's possible that this market might be heading down for the 200-day moving average. The last time I tested the 200-day moving average or was near it was back at the beginning of this rally in uh, August. And um, it's rapidly uh, approaching that level on the downside. So no reason to step in there and try and be a hero. We've still got all these moving averages declining. We closed right on the lows again in here. Um, no matter how you look at it, uh, we're, we're you know, st short term still in a downtrend. It's got these lower highs and lower lows, and, and uh, we've still got that declining five-day moving average. If you're in there trying to make money on the long side, you better make those trades quick, and you got to be doing them off like a one-minute time frame like you see in here. The S&P 500 today you know, was in a very nice uptrend early on. It's you know, nice, perfect little pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Then it made a lower low right here, right at the daily VWAP, the average, the volume weighted average price. And then the sellers took control, kind of chopped around in there. But at the end of the day, it was unable to uh, sustain a rally. It, it came up, rallied up towards that VWAP, and then it just fell apart once again right down to S2. So uh, if you're trading the long side, again, you did have the opportunity early on in the day as it made that nice, you know, it was in a great uptrend here, higher highs. And higher lows we had a nice series of those then the market spoke and said no more that's it that's all we're giving you today on the long side and here these five minute chart ten minute chart they're all bearish there was no reason to be looking for the bottom people tried picking the bottom here 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 and here and none of them are right so far because we closed right on those lows so that means that anyone that that, that is bought and is still holding over the last week and a half actually more than that anyone who's bought and is still holding basically since uh, right around I guess you know even over in in, in here back in November um, is in a losing position so the markets are down for the year they're down for the for the day the week the month and um, it you know we've had some severe damage done to this uptrend so uh, continue to just be cautious in here and it, it, you know when we get a rally because it will rally again Look to, uh, if you're still holding some of these stocks, waiting for that bounce, definitely don't wait for, uh, for, for you know, a retest of the highs before you start to reduce your exposure. This, this market has broadcast a clear message. That message is that risks are higher. The market is going to become much more selective. And that's why I put that list together of stocks. I, I do it anyways, but uh, that's why I... I I put it up on the blog this weekend of the stocks that are reporting better than expected earnings. Not that earnings are the reason that I think you should buy a stock, and and and, and neither they're, it's similar, like I said, to the moving average. You don't buy a stock because it's at a rising, you know, 10, 20, or 50-day moving average. That's an inflection point. It's something that we know is going to impact the psychology of other participants and get them interested in purchasing the stock. Therefore, we want to be more aware of it. And we have to be more selective in the stocks that we're looking at because the market is going to get more selective. It is getting more selective overall. And so far, it's saying there aren't a lot of good stocks out there right now, so why not put more odds in your favor? The NASDAQ, but in, and by that I mean, um, before I cut myself off, get more odds in your favor make sure the stocks in a good technical position if you're gonna buy it don't buy a stock just because of a story and don't you know when you look at that story whether it's better than expected earnings FDA or whatever make sure the chart backs it up and manage risk because if you if you if you're not out quick things can get qu uh, bad very fast um, the NASDAQ 100 uh, we thought last week I thought last week that maybe the 43 level would would hold its support it's broken down through that. I think we're going to get a flush out here 
soon. And maybe, it, again, it takes it down to the 200-day moving average, which for the Qs is down near that 41 level. So it's still, you know, 41 the level is about another 2.5% away. So um, you don't want to be early. It's better to wait for the evidence of the buying and then get involved. Once, you know, not at the bottom. No one's going to pick the bottom accurately. And we, what we want to do is we want to wait for this pattern of lower highs and lower lows to um, to be interrupted. We want to see this long, this green moving average start to flatten out. We want to see the red and blue moving averages crisscross. That represents indecision. It doesn't mean buy, but maybe taking out resistance up near 42.75 over the next day or two. Maybe that's when we're going to be able to sustain a rally. But right now, the message still remains clear. If you're buying stocks. You're going against the primary trend, and you're going to get exactly what you deserve for going against the, the, the primary trend, which is losses. And I, when I say the primary trend, I mean on the short-term time frame. On the daily time frame, though, we do have a much worse picture than we have in quite a while. We've got that 50-day moving average, which is declining, and that tells us right now, guilty till proven innocent, that we can't trust any rally, that any rally should be used to lighten up the positions that you have long if you're still holding, and you ought to be starting to scour the market more for short sale candidates as well. The mid caps, uh, we thought maybe potential support would be found near this 150. Resistance, once broken, tends to act as support, but it doesn't mean it's going to. It's just a tendency. It's a, something that tells us that it's time to start looking for evidence of buying. We didn't see any of that evidence in here on Friday. We haven't seen any evidence of it today either. We've got a very strong downtrend in these mid-caps as people are scrambling to lock in profits because there's been massive profits in there. And this selling has taken on a life of its own. It's just, it's just unfolding based on fear in here. And who knows how far down it's going to go before we run out of sellers and someone steps in and that supply-demand equation starts to equal out and then the buyers take control. It may happen quickly. Um, and a lot of people are probably losing money looking for it to happen quickly. If you're going to trade the long side, wait for evidence. Don't wait. Don't don't wait for the bigger trade and, and look at it on a two-minute time frame. The, you know, you can you can make money on this, but once it gets up to those prior levels, you got to expect that it's got a, a higher probability of failing. So if if we're looking for the turnaround in the mid caps, it's probably getting back above the important level of 150. That's probably where we start to see evidence in there, but there's no evidence of that whatsoever yet. Cash remains the best position to have right now. Um, the semiconductors remain in this range. They look like they're heading back down towards that 32.5 to 32.3 or 32.75 to 33 level. So it should be finding support in here, but uh, markets don't always do what they're supposed to do. That's why we use stops. That's why we look at this, and I'm going to continue to say cash is your best position right now. You can scalp some trades intraday, but I wouldn't be holding overnight because of these gaps that occur. Um, instead, you want to just look at it as more of a time to be defensive. Wait for the dust to settle. Don't become part of the emotional crowd that's just in there trying to buy and sell, throwing their stocks away, getting emotional about it. Wait for the evidence to show itself to us. Then we go in and strike and take advantage of all the people who've been throwing their stocks away.